Hey guys, Scott Martin here. I'm standing here at our marina on Lake Okeechobee in Clewiston, Florida. You know, I wanted to come to you guys and talk a little bit about a sensitive issue that we're all dealing with here. You know, I watched a television program that the Weather Channel produced just a few days ago that aired on television, and the title was Toxic Lake Okeechobee. And I watched that documentary, and it really, it really bothered me um, for a couple reasons. You know, unfortunately, the media has kind of slanted their views towards this lake in an unfavorable way. And I understand that this is a sensitive issue, and there's lots of people involved on both coasts and, again, here at Lake Okeechobee. You know, we have communities around the lake, and, and we all depend on Lake Okeechobee for our, for our livelihood, just like everybody does at the coast as well. You know, I'm kind of caught in the middle here because I love Lake Okeechobee and I fish on Lake Okeechobee all the time. And I spend my summers in Stewart, Florida, enjoying the great fishing over there and fish the west coast of Florida as well. So I, I do truly understand some of the frustrations that uh, the state's feeling with the water releases and the different issues that we're dealing with. But, but again, when I watched this documentary, it, it, really, it really bothered me. And I wanted to kind of do this video to kind of tell you a few things about Lake Okeechobee some of the things that I see, and again, some of the things that bothered me with some of the terms and the words that this documentary used. You know, one is the title of the video, Toxic Lake Okeechobee. Let me tell you guys, I live here on this lake. I spend more time on Lake Okeechobee than just about anybody, and this lake is not a toxic lake. It's not a bubbling cesspool of green, blue-green algae. There's not dead fish. There's not dying manatees. It's a beautiful, healthy resource. Um, can the water be cleaner? Absolutely. Are there lots of organizations and groups around the state of Florida, right here in Clewiston as well, focusing on making this lake a better lake and improving the water quality? Uh, yes, and I'm all for that. You know, but, but, but the, the term toxic uh, and the pictures that are being painted with, uh, with the media bothers me because I spend my life out here on this lake and, and I don't see massive things of algae floating around, dead fish, dying mammals and, and birds. I mean, this lake is beautiful. It's a healthy lake, tons of grass. The fishing's fantastic. Um, it, it's a wonderful resource, and we depend on this resource, again, for our livelihood here at our marina. And, uh, and I know there's so many people around the country that watch these television programs and read these newspaper articles, and they probably create a picture in their mind of Lake Okeechobee as being a, a dirty, nasty lake. And that's not the, that's not the case. That's mistruths for sure. Um, so I'm here to kind of tell you that, guys. Uh, again, I've spent a lot of time out here on the lake recently, uh, even throughout the summer. And, um, and, and this lake, it's an awesome lake. It's an awesome fishery. And I encourage you guys to come down. And, and, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things that with nature, uh, you know, some years you have droughts, some years you have high water. There's cool years, there's hot years. And unfortunately, this last year, we dealt with an unseasonably wet winter. I mean, it rained a ton in January and February, and the lake came up to a, a very high level, and it's something that doesn't happen all the time. It's, it's a very, very strange year for sure. And, uh, and there was a lot of water releases, and, and again, that caused some issues. But to, but to point fingers at only one organization or one one issue here on Lake Okeechobee I think is a little unfair. I think there's lots of issues that, that are creating some of, these, uh, some of these issues that people are dealing with. And, and, I, and again, I know there's a lot of people involved with helping and finding solutions for that. And I'm all for that, for sure. But, but again, my, my point to this, this little message to you guys is that Lake Okeechobee is a beautiful lake. It's alive and well. And, and I want to show you, there's some, some clips that we just filmed recently and, and even a few months ago uh, of, of what I see, the Lake Okeechobee that I see, the beautiful fishery that I get to spend my, my time on. And thousands of people come down to our, our, our lake here and enjoy this resource to, to enjoy the great fishing and watch the bird life and see alligators. And there's more manatees in this lake than I've ever seen before. So it's a fantastic fishery. Take a look at some of these clips that we just recently shot uh, out on Lake Okeechobee.
Weren't those some amazing shots? I mean, that's the Lake Okeechobee I see, full of wildlife, beautiful sunrises, beautiful sunsets, and tons of great fishing. And, and again, th this message really was just to educate you guys that, that aren't familiar with Lake Okeechobee, because I'm sure a lot of you have a picture in your mind of what it looks like. And if you read all these articles, these mistruths about Lake Okeechobee, as far as what it looks like and toxic lake and green algae and, and dead fish and dying manatees, that's not the case. It's a beautiful resource full of tons of wildlife and uh, it's an awesome place. So again, I encourage you guys to, uh, to dive into some of the facts, dive into some of the scientific results that the scientists are talking about, the water quality and different things. And again, I'm all for clean water. I want this resource to be healthy. I want both coasts to be healthy. And I want us all to get along and enjoy South Florida as one big, beautiful resource. So thanks for guys. See you on the water.